From rain gear to firefighting foam, PER and polyfluoral alkyl substances, or PFOS, are a class of thousands of chemicals known for the repellent properties of their strong carbon-fluorine bonds. However, that strength of bond has made them pervasive throughout the environment, being found in soil, water, air, and even in our bloodstreams. But what are the main concerns about PFAS contamination? Because PFAS are not metabolized like most toxic substances, drugs, um, so they don't break down just like they don't break down in the environment. So the same thing happens in humans. Studies also suggest an association of PFAS with a variety of negative human health outcomes. In our food systems, the bioaccumulation of PFAS in fish and plants have been of greatest concern. However, its presence in drinking water remains the primary exposure route. Well, we're really lucky in the United States that um, public water systems are uh, regulated under the Safe Drinking Water Act, and uh, that's one of the reasons why there's so much interest in PFAS compounds now, because EPA is, uh, has proposed to start uh, measuring and monitoring concentrations of specific PFAS in drinking water systems. Those apply uh, to public water systems. Domestic wells, private wells, uh, aren't being treated or monitored uh, for PFAS, and, and those are probably among the most vulnerable uh, to being exposed to PFAS compounds. While policy may assist in prevention of PFAS consumption, scientists and leaders across the globe have turned their attention to developing solutions in the field. Here is the work of numerous researchers and students across the University of Nebraska. So my research is look at the applied microbiology at the interface of applied microbiology and environmental engineering. So we look at uh, different aspects of microbial community in, in, in the natural and the engineered systems. So one research area we're looking at is using the microbial potential to degrade pollutant in the environment, water, soil, and other matrices. The microbial transformation has always been considered one of the more economical approach of removing contaminant from water, since there hasn't been a whole lot of research done in this area for PFAS compound. And that's kind of what motivated us to look at different microbial communities and see which one of them can degrade those compounds. So hopefully, eventually, we can develop um, an economically feasible approach for removing PFAS from, from water system. Uh, my team focuses on physical chemical processes that goes on in a water system uh, for different taking out pol different pollutants or understanding how pollutants behave in a natural systems. So in this project, particularly, we are looking at uh, PFAS, uh, the forever chemicals, how they will end up in water sediment and how they will be adsorbed in a sediment or sand in, uh, at the bottom of the river. The larger benefit is that it benefits the health of humans in general, and also we are trying to protect Nebraska's agricultural lands and rivers that are associated and that provide food and water to the larger community. Over at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, Sarah Tucker is investigating PFAS within her PhD research. My research topic is examining the extent of PFAS contamination in drinking water in Nebraska. What I hope to achieve with the results from this research is information to better guide public health decisions regarding PFAS and water quality in Nebraska. We're just beginning to figure out if there's PFAS in drinking water, number one. Two, are there communities at greater risk of exposure? to PFAS and three recommendations that can be provided to residents to reduce their exposure. Back on UNL's East Campus, the team at the Water Sciences Lab has been continuing their water quality research. So this is kind of our area of interest at the moment is to look at how, what kind of concentrations of PFAS occur in wastewater and um, how they vary among different treatment processes and plants. We're especially interested on the concentrations of uh, PFAS in wastewater treatment plants because uh, many states are now uh, grappling with whether or not to start regulating these compounds in wastewater treatment plant effluent.
So the methodology of my study involves taking samples from actual wastewater treatment plants, bringing them back to the lab. I extract them to put them in a form that our instrument can read. I can look at that data and I'll have um, the levels of PFAS at that point in time for that treatment plant. So the challenges I hope this research will overcome include getting us past this lack of data for small treatment plants. Um, there's not a lot of studies at this size, especially not um, studies on rural populations. And so I think it's a huge challenge to like look at these underserved communities and see their risk factors as well. Well, I'd like to think that the science we do here um, contributes to the quality of life for people in Nebraska, that we have uh, safer water supplies, um, that it inspires uh, students and faculty to do this type of research where we study uh, contamination of water and the environment and learn about ways that we can control contamination and improve the quality of the environment as well as our water resources. The impact of research at Nebraska not only supports the Nebraskan community, the environment, and scientific literature, but also increases educational and professional opportunities for students. UNFCE has exceeded my expectations as far as providing a collaborative research environment. And when you have a supportive environment that can, it is possible to, to answer any questions at the intersection of environmental health and toxicology. I initially got into research as a chemistry major. Um, my first research lab was actually a microfluidics lab and then I moved to an analytical chemistry lab, and then I became an intern here in an environmental analytical lab. And it's kind of a wild path for me to follow, but it, it really made sense, and it's all um, experience that has been super valuable in helping me figure out like what I like to do as a researcher. I really believe in making the world a better place, and so if I can do that while doing something I find interesting, I'm going to.